Well, this morning I want to read to you from the book of Genesis. And Genesis is probably one of my favorite uh, um, books in the Bible. I want to read to you from chapter 1, verses 26 through 28. And God said, Let us make humans in our image, after our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the heavens and over the livestock and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. And so God created humans in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. And God blessed them and God said to them, be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the heaven and over every living thing that moves on the earth. This is God's word. Amen. We, we have a, a question in our lives often. Is we wonder what our purpose is. And, and uh, um, I, I find it interesting. I was, I was reading this and thinking about the other commands in Scripture. God commands light, and there's light, and, he, and the fish, and then the fish uh, do their fishy things, and the animals do their animal things, and the vegetation does their vegetative things. And, and uh, we're the only ones that had a problem <laughs> with, uh, with the commands of God. And that, that, should, uh, that should trouble us sometimes that frogs had a better uh, uh, idea of obeying what God had called us to do uh, than, than we did. And then there's this way that this translation is done here in subdue, which, which really is to be stewards over, and how do we care and interact. But all of this comes into mind of what is our purpose? Uh, we want to know what it is that we're called to do. Uh, um, and uh, um, we, we wonder uh, what it is that we're, we're going. Who am I? Where am I going? What am I headed in this life? Do I know where I've been? Do I know where I'm headed? Um, and some would say that uh, that most people of the day are a lot like uh, Christopher Columbus and, and this uh, quote about him. It says, Columbus went out not knowing where he was going, and when he got there, he did not know where he was, and when he got back, he did not know where he had been, and he did it all on other people's money. And I wonder how many of us kind of walk around with that sort of same idea. We're looking for purpose in all kinds of places. We look at, uh, it's sort of that, that old song, looking for love in all the wrong places and too many faces. And it's that, um, that same idea. Our country lives on the mission of the pursuit of life, uh, liberty, and happiness. And we often, we begin there, but there's a question of what is freedom? What is happiness? What does life um, really mean? What does it mean for us to live? What does it mean for us to be free? What does it mean for us to be happy? Every advertisement will tell you what it is to be happy. And, and I've, I've marveled at how much of our um, happiness that advertisement tells us is dictated about our own prowess. I mean, it's funny that every beer commercial is uh, suddenly you open up a beer can and then you are with a bunch of um, uh, bikini-clad women, which I'm sure is every woman's desire. Um, and it's just a funny thing. And maybe it's what they com- maybe it's just they're saying that we're advertising beer goggles, and that's what everyone looks like. And uh, but it's the same thing. I remember Swifter being sold, and it was, and they were using sex to sell a Swiffer, a Swifter. I don't even know what it's called. I have one. I have two. Um, I don't use them. But uh, we we have. You know, that's that, that same thing. It's interesting. But what we're telling people, though, is whether it be a car, a TV, a house, a certain type of furniture, we're saying that you need this to be completed, that this is what it means to have life. Now, what we're discovering, and uh, I, while I do not believe that God has caused uh, this COVID virus, I think out of it, it reveals many things that are happening with us. And what we're discovering is that all those things that advertisers have told us what we need, we're saying, I don't really need that. What I need is connection. What I need is people. What I need is God. What I need is something. Whether they even know it's Jesus, it's this idea of I need something more. What is the connection to have there? We have to take inventory of who we are. It's that, that old saying that the unexamined life is not worth living, and it's true. We have to look and see what our purpose is and who it is we're calling to be. And the world continues to tell you all these different things. There's a song by one of the songwriters that I really love named Rich Mullins, and he says, they said, boy, you just follow, it's called the maker of noses. Um, They said, boy, you just follow your heart, but my heart just led me into my chest. They said, follow your nose, but the direction changed every time I went and turned my head. They said, boy, just follow your dreams, but my dreams were only misty notions. 
but the father of hearts and the maker of noses and the giver of dreams. He's the one I have chosen and I will follow him. Most of us, we can end up haplessly flowing down the stream of our life, returning from purpose to purpose, or we turn our purposes into just surface goals that never attend to any real essence and, and to real truth and to who we are. We're made and who we're made to be. And what I want to tell you today is that we are made with a design. We are made with a purpose in mind. I don't mean that that means there's only one purpose for you to do in this life, but it is the purpose of who we're called to be. And we have to be intentional in how we nurture that purpose and that call in our life. And that's why I plead to you to read your Bible. We talk about it every week when we talk about bells. It's one of the things. Learn Jesus. Read Scripture. Look at what's happening um, there in, in Scripture. And so read your Bibles. In Genesis, it begins, in the beginning, God looked and pondered and intentionally created life. It was not an accident. He wasn't just a whim one day. He's like, let's see if I can make an ostrich. And the designs, whatever that may, may be looking like. But he's just here. There's beauty. There's, there's order involved in it. And at the pinnacle of all of this, um, as he deliberated, he created people for relationship with him, with each other, and with creation. Where do we find that purpose? I think it's found right here in Scripture. The nature of God is one of purpose and intention. It's one of, of reaching out and design. He doesn't do things by accident that He calls us into being. We only have to look at nature to discover the whole purpose of all of this. I was reading or watching, so I can't remember where, where I got this from, but basically uh, Yellowstone National Park was the first national park, I believe, that was, uh, was created. And, and about 70 years ago, um, there were, used to be wolves everywhere. And they ended up moving out of the area. Either they were hunted out or because of the hunters, they were, they were chased out and they were moved. And what happened because of that, um, the the prey that they um, were predators to, the elk and, uh, um, and deer, that population ended up exploding. But what happened because the population of the elk and deer exploded was they ate all the vegetation. And when all the vegetation um, was eaten up, it began to deplete the number of birds and squirrels and rabbits. That, and then it began to um, decrease the number of vegetation that helped with the streams. And so the water ends up spreading out further and it wasn't the banks ended up losing their edge and, and they're focusing. And so it, um, the whole landscape began to change and not for the good. And so in 1995, wolves were reintroduced into the Yellowstone National Park. And what happened then was they started um, preying on the elk and the, the deer. And when that happened, the grass came back. And then when the grass and the, the trees began to come back, it ended up helping with the embankments and the, and the river um, shape. Uh, the rabbits and the um, squirrels and other vermin, as y Yosemite Sam calls them, and he said they came back. With them comes back the hawks and the eagles and, uh, um, and, and the many different birds, they started coming back. And so we had hawks and weasels and foxes and badgers and ravens and, and eagles, and the bears began to increase. And all of this, because of this new growth, there was less erosion in the embankment. The rivers changed. It became deeper and stronger and cleaner. And the water would collect instead of spreading out and dissipating. And so we saw all these animals coming back and changing the landscape. The the intention, I think about that, if, uh, if varmints have purpose, if wolves have purpose, if egrets have purpose, um, if something as simple as a finch has purpose, it's no wonder when Jesus says, and I've said this each week now, consider the birds of the field, the birds of the air, the lilies of the field. You see, there's purpose all around us, God's order and design, and it matters how we engage each other, how we engage God, and how we engage this world. And that if they're important, then what about us, the stewards of all of this? How important are we in the midst of, of all of this? What is the strength that God and the trust that God has placed in us? You and me, we are the pinnacle of this creation, and God has made us with design, intent, and in purpose. He created all things and placed us in the middle of this and said, look, it is good. 
which means, as theologian A.W. Tozer wrote, all creation was in absolute harmony with God in fulfilling its ordained purpose. All creation was in absolute harmony with God and fulfilling its ordained purpose. And the scripture, I believe it's, um, the word is mahod tov, or it's either mahod tov or tov mahod. I can't remember the order of them, but it means good. When God said this was good, but it wasn't just good, it was forcefully good. It means it was brought in together, it was bound in together. And this goodness that God calls us in to be, that we are a part of this. And here's where we need to be careful because our first instinct when we start thinking, okay, I am good. I do have a purpose. What am I supposed to do? What is it that I'm supposed to be? Where am I supposed to go? What are the things I'm supposed to do? We all, we immediately, we go to this idea, this instinct to what am I supposed to do? And we get anxious and we get fearful and we, we look at what we're supposed to be and, and do. And we see what other people are doing. We start comparing ourselves instead of asking yourself, who am I supposed to be? You're being influences your doing, but you have to understand who you are being and who you've called to be. That's what Genesis is so important. I mean, it begins um, when, when the Hebrews were putting together the, the, the Old Testament scriptures, it was an order of importance. And this is first, and the first words, in the beginning, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. In the beginning, God. And this is the time um, when they were in Babylonian captivity, it was probably when this was written down. And this, when they were being told by everyone else that their, their religion didn't matter, they were being told that they didn't matter. They were outsiders. They were told that they didn't matter, which I think is beautiful in that, is that commentators will say, you know, it's that God wasn't afraid to be the God of the outsiders. And he's saying, in the beginning, God, and that's where purpose, and, and then it says they walked with God in the cool of the day. They walked with God. Their being was walking with God in the garden to chat. What do they have to talk about? They weren't complaining about stuff. They couldn't say, well, the weather is awful here. Well, it's paradise. That was good. I don't have enough to eat. Got plenty. They had everything they needed. Um, they didn't have to worry about clothes. They were naked. And uh, it was just, that was the thing. They, didn't, they were without need or want. There wasn't sickness. There weren't brokenness. They walked with God. It wasn't until they stopped walking with God that everything fell apart. But there's something back in that. It says, so what did they need? Well, they didn't use God as a vending machine, for one. It was God was someone they walked with. The relationship, for the sake of the relationship with it. I think too many of us, we look at Scripture and we look at our idea of walking with God as something peripheral to help us. It's like, oh, let me see what I can glean from this in order to help me today, which isn't a bad thing to do, but it can't be the only thing to do. Imagine, and some of us it's easy to imagine, that we use our friendships and our relationships with other people as just what they can offer me. It's an unhealthy relationship. But then there's relationships where we just want to be. You ever had those conversations where you're just prolonging the conversation just so you can just be around the person? Now, I'm not a good judge of that because I just talk all the time nonstop. But, that's, uh, but there's that idea that we do that. And that's with God. Just being, being in that relationship. We are made for worship. We are made for God. And this isn't a punishment. It's just how we're made. As much as a marble is made to roll, it exists to roll and be beautiful, and that's it. We... We can't be any other way. We find our true purpose, meaning, happiness, and belonging when we walk with God. We discover in this place of walking with God that we're made to worship with God. And worshiping God is not simply telling God that He's awesome. This isn't just about, you know, we don't want that guy. The person just always goes around, you know, um, and... Uh, it's not just saying, oh, God, you're awesome, you're great. He doesn't need that. But living out our lives in celebration of who he is, that's what it is to worship. We live our lives in celebration of who God is, walking with God in everything that we do. 
And so we ask our, God, ourselves this question, does my life and how I live my life honor God? Does it honor who I've been created to be? Does it honor my relationship with myself? Does it honor my relationship with others? Those are the questions we can be asking daily. Many of us are just looking to discover what it is to be, um, what it is that will be most fulfilling in our lives. We bounce around and, and we get glimpses of it. We never fully get immersed in it. And I've wondered why. And I think it's because we have, we've done it without connecting first to God. We've tried to, to separate ourselves from the work of God in our life. And so that one of the questions you can ask is, this thing that I want to do, does it honor God? Before we look at a list of rules and put a list of rules down and go, well, the, the Bible has all these do nots. Well, we don't really live in the do nots. Um, we live in the, the do's. That God's first commandment is to go forth and do. Uh, the do nots are, are a good warning sign. It's the red dot on your stove that says, this is still hot. Um, but it, it's the... If I can think even in the positive sense of walking with God, is this relationship, friendship, or whatever it might be that I'm entering into, does it honor God? Does this uh, way that I'm handling money honor God? Does it honor the, the divinity and the hope in other people? Does it fit in our first calling to walk with God? Our origin, it begins in God. God made us for worship. Worship, worship is living our lives in good relationship with Jesus. And how do you build a relationship with God? Well, you have to be intentional about it. No, none of us have accidental positive relationships. We have incidental relationships. We have passing relationships. But if you want to have a good relationship, call it good, you have to be intentional about it. And so I've got a couple questions um, that I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to guide you through. And I want, so if you've got your pens and pencils, they're going to be up on your screen in some form. And, uh, um, and so we're going to show those to you. But to be intentional, to build a relationship, with, it requires um, that wonderful word, it's a four-letter word, time. Is that four letters? Yeah. <laughs> so it's uh, four letters. So the first one is, write down one day, one way you will spend time with God this week. One day you'll spend, and these don't have to be the only ones, but here's some suggestions. Read Scripture. Meditate or pray. Use that meditative prayer thing we've talked about. And uh, being mindful of God's presence when helping someone. So when you're helping and engaging someone to help, be mindful that God is at work there. Starting being mindfulness of something, paying attention to what we're doing. So we have that uh, random acts of kindness and say, be intentional about your acts of kindness. Okay, the second one. One way you spend time strengthening your relationship. So right now, one way you'll strengthen your relationship um, this week uh, with uh, um, someone else. And so take time to listen. Um, and I was reading something, and it was talking about an article about different ways to, to not be toxic and toxic ways of responding when someone shares what they're going through and you say, I know exactly how you feel. No, you don't. So taking time to listen is actually listen and ask them questions about how they're feeling. Don't tell them that you know how they feel. Um, B, putting someone else first, putting someone else's needs before your own. Uh, doing an act of kindness. See, this goes in with bells. We talk about blessing people every week. I'm going to say it at the end of the service, go and bless three people this week. And the third way, well, you'll spend time taking care of yourself. So these probably are three things right out of my journal. <laughs> so, um, but I figure they're healthy things to, to look at doing. Um, but they're not the only ways of taking care of yourself. But, you know, getting to bed in time. Sleep is, uh, is important. Being still. Taking a walk. I think all along and all of it, being aware and mindful of God's presence in your life. Be intentional about seeking God. God has made you with purpose. Be purposeful in your response. You were made to worship, to be in relationship with God. If you live into that relationship and start nurturing that and not look at it as something you check off, you might have to start off that way and go, well, i got to check this thing off just to get in the habit of being with God. But soon what you'll find out is that you 
you long for that time to be intentional with God. The beautiful thing about praying without ceasing is it is something you can do the more mindful you are throughout the day that you begin to see God working in everything. And so my encouragement for you this week is to be intentional with what God is doing in your life. Pay attention to the moments and nurture, nurture that faith. And you'll discover life again, and especially in these times. Let us pray. Holy God, we thank you that you are here, that you are present with us, that you are in all things, that you did call us good at one time, and that your good love is what calls us back into your grace, that you reconcile us to you. And so we ask for forgiveness for those places we've neglected you, and we ask for encouragement and strength for those places and ways we want to grow in our faith this week. 